Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the treatment of compound financial instrument. So this is again a, a topic that is covered in the IAS 32 IFRS 9 that if a company issues a financial instrument that is classified as a compound financial instrument that what is the accounting treatment. So what is a compound financial instrument? A compound financial instrument is a financial instrument that uh, comprises of both a liability component and a equity component from the issuer's perspective. In that case, IS 32 requires that the split accounting is to be created, is to be made, that the component part to be accounted for and presented separately according to the substance based on the definition of liability and equity. And this split is made at issuance and not revised subsequently due to changes in market interest rate, share prices or other events that changes the likelihood that conversion option will be exercised. So at the date of issue, we have to identify how much is the liability component and how much is the equity component and what is the strategy of identifying these two instruments. So we, we, as, as I told you that a convertible bond contains two components. One is a financial liability and that is the issuer's obligation to pay cash and other is an equity instrument which is the holder's option to convert into common shares. So the investor has two options either to get the money back or to convert it into ordinary shares at the date of maturity or at the conversion date. Now, as far as a split accounting is concerned, what we have to do, we have to identify first the liability component. So when the initial carrying amount of a compound financial instrument is required to be allocated to its equity and liability component, the equity component is assigned the residual amount after deducting from the fair value of the instrument as a whole amount separately determined for the liability component. So from the value first identify its liability component and the residual will be the equity component. Now how you can identify that uh, what is the liability component and what, what is the equity component. So here let me tell you that what is the criteria. So for example the total instrument is a convertible bond. So we'll first identify the liability component of that particular bond. And if there is any residue, then residual is called the equity component. So this is the equity component and this is the liability component and how we can identify liability component. That is the present value of future cash flows, assuming redemption will take place. Remember, assuming redemption will take place, then if redemption will take place, then what is the PV of future cash flows using the market interest rate will give us a figure of liability component. And as a result, the residual component will be the equity part. Now let's do it with the help of an example. So for example, an entity issues 2% convertible bond 2% is the coupon rate at the nominal value of 36,000 on 1st January 20X1. So this is the issuance date and at that particular date, we have to identify its liability component and its equity component. Now, the bonds are convertible at any time up to maturity into 120 ordinary shares for each $100 of the bond. Alternatively, the bonds will be redeemed at par after three years. So its life is three years and after three years, it can be converted into the, it can be converted or it can be alternatively redeemed. Similar non-convertible bond would carry an interest rate of 9%. This is a market rate of interest. The entity is preparing its financial statement for the year ended December 20X1. They are not sure how to record the convertible bonds and have credited the 36,000 cash received to non-current liabilities and recognize that interest paid in the year as a finance cost. So a mistake has been done that 
the amount received is considered as a financial liability 36,000 and interest is calculated on that amount as well. So first of all, uh, let's identify the uh, correct amount. Then we have to make the correct journal entry that should have been applied to correctly record the initial recognition of the convertible bond and then we'll prepare some extract out of it. So first of all, we have to identify the present value of future cash flows. So the maturity is of three years, the coupon rate is 2%. So let's find out the calculation. So let's calculate the figures. So first of all, uh, let's prepare a table here. Cash flows, relevant discount factors and the PV. So as there are three years maturity, so first of all, we have to consider interest. So interest from one to three, three years interest and the interest working is uh, like uh, how much is the interest? So the nominal value is 36,000 and the coupon rate is 2%. So the interest value per annum is 720, 720 per annum for three years. So we have to apply the discount rate 9%. We have to identify the annuity factor that is 2.531 multiply by this. So the PV of the interest on each year is 1822. And in the, at the end of the third year, there is a principal repayment of 30, 36,000 and the PV factor at the end of third year is 0 0.772. It will give us a present value of 27792. Hence, the total PV of future cash flows is 29614. And this is the PV of cash flows, and that becomes the liability component. So, from the total component, you can see that uh, the total value of the instrument uh, is the total value of the convertible bond was 36,000. We received 36,000. The liability component out of this 36,000 is 29614 and the residual is equity component and then residual part is the balancing figure is 6386. So as a result, if you have to account for this transaction, so what is the accounting adjustment of this transaction? You have to debit cash element. So bank account debit with the proceed 36,000 and uh, liability credit by the value 29614 and equity credits. So this is the initial accounting 6386. So this is the initial accounting entry. Now at the initial recognition, now we have liability component as well as the equity component. So liability component is to be measured at subsequently at amortized cost. And uh, for equity component, there will be no subsequent accounting. Equity will remain the same at its original value and liability is to be measured at the amortized cost using the effective interest rate of 9%. So let's identify one year forward the amortized cost. So what is the amortized cost? Let's identify, let's prepare a table for amortized cost. So after one year, what is the amortized cost? So the initial value of the liability, let's identify the initial value initial value of the liability was 29614 and what you have to add you have to add finance cost using effective interest that is 9% 29614 multiplied by 9% effective rate 2665 and deduct the amount of interest paid at the rate of coupon so the coupon payment is uh, what was coupon payment that is 7 to zero so as a result we have the available amount and that available amount is 31559 so this is the carried forward value to be reported in balance sheet and this particular amount 
is to be reported in profit and loss account as a finance cost. This is the amount to be reported in balance sheet. So at the till the end of the third year period, there will be the amortized cost based accounting and uh, at the end of the uh, maturity, uh, what you have to do? We have to adjust uh, as per the uh, decision taken by the investor. If investor uh, demand maturity, then we have to uh, record it accordingly. If investor demand the uh, conversion into ordinary shares, then we have to record it accordingly. So at the end of third year, the amortized cost value will be at the end of third year, the financial liability will becomes the, the financial liability component will be exactly the three years post value will be 36,000 and uh, our equity value will be will remain the same that is 6386 this is the picture at the end of the maturity so if at the end of maturity if investor decide to redeem that redemption decision taken by the investor then what we have to do we have to pay 36000 so as a result will debit financial liability by 36,000 and credit bank by 36,000. What would happen with the, the equity value? What you can do, you can transfer equity. So equity option debit 6386 and you can transfer it into the retain earning that is 6386. This is, this is the accounting treatment when there will be a redemption. And in, if case in, if there is a case of uh, the conversion of ordinary shares, then the accounting treatment is that debit financial liability and credit share capital and share premium. 